This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and welcome back to another absolutely fantastic Conan Exiles video. Today, we are taking a look at a new build, which I'm calling the Lawnmower. Let's get to it. Before we jump into this video, I just want to make it clear that this idea was not my own. The inspiration for this video was provided to me from a comment by one of you fantastic people, the comment that you see on the screen right now, so thank you very much for that. Okay, let's take a look at the stats. Now, I have a bunch of buffs going on right now, and armor, and more paint, and just all kinds of crazy stuff, and we'll get into it all. So, you're just going to do 42 here, 10 here. 23 here, none here, 24 here, 18 here, none here. So we do this because this eventually maxes out. This gets it. I'm not really too concerned about this. I mainly wanted it to max out to get double damage from the weapon that we're using. This is great. If you get below health, this is the main thing that we were after right here and double damage. That's the only reason we're maxing out strength. Agility, because, you know, this is super handy to have here. Vitality, I would have liked to have gotten to this, but we just didn't have the points, so we end up right here. Um, gives us enough vitality, we can take a bit of a beating with the armor that we have. We have 80% damage reduction, so, and this gives us enough health that we can take a pretty good beating for most things. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Fire Spark, why would you have all of that grit? Nobody, nobody needs that much grit. And maybe, maybe you don't, but you know, I'd rather have uh, more than enough than not enough. So we went to the fourth perk here. Also, I wanted the fourth perk because of this. Now, this doesn't, I don't think this affects our heavy attacks. I think this is just your light attacks because this is basic attacks. I don't know what a basic attack is. We have light and heavy attacks, so they need to reword that. Either way, I went for it. We need a ton of grit and you will see why. Encumbrance, went to uh, this one here. We had a little bit left over after trying to get to this, so I just put the last point in there, which puts us where we're at in encumbrance. Now, we max out in strength when we equip our weapon and we will get to all that. Let's take a look at the buffage we got going on here. So for buff Buffs. You can run the cooked catfish and the cooked anglerfish. That will give you your strength and vitality buffs that you see there on the left hand side. If you do not want to make the elixirs, so we have those there as well. If you want those, you can run the elixirs instead. You can get these from the improved fish traps that you get from the Dagon dungeon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my video on the Dagon dungeon. So you can just eat those, catch those, eat those. They're super, should be super cheap, easy to get, whichever your preference is, uh, the elixirs or the fish. And then we have the elixir of endurance and the elixir of numbing. And we also have the war paint of grit. Okay. So let's start taking a look at the items that here. Don't pay any attention to this. This we'll get to later. Um, so our items here is the champion's helmet, the flawless heavy veneer chest piece, the champion's gauntlets, the flawless barbarian leggings, and the flawless barbarian boots. Now, the reason I have these is because this kind of balances out our heat. We're running a lot of... Um, of stuff that, that heats us up a lot. So this kind of balances us out a little bit and allows us to handle most places in the desert. You'll get pretty hot, but you won't get like, you know, to the point where you're starting to take damage. If you go to a cold area and you need a lot of cold protection, you can swap those out for the champion's boots and the flawless veneer heavy tacit. And on all of the armor pieces, we are running the master armor plating. Now, I just want to point out that this is an end game build that you would play something else and then respect to this later. Normally when I do these build guides, I like to show you the steps uh, as you're going through it and leveling up to end up in the final build. But with this build, I don't really recommend it because of the weapon that we need. Um, you have to basically get the weapon to make this build worth it. So this is something where you get our weapon, that our main weapon, which is the side of Thag, and then you can have the option or take the option to spec into this build after the fact run whatever other build you want to run until then this is uh this is a oh i'm going to respec and try this build out after i'm already level 60 after i've already hit in game and have been playing it a while build 
And as I just stated, we're using the Scythe of Thag as our main weapon. It's 72 damage. Uh, once we have it equipped in our maxed out strength, if you take a look at our stats here, we're doing 144 damage. That's just with the light attacks, so that doesn't, um, I don't know what the damage is with the heavy attacks, but it's a lot. It's going to be way more than 144 and if you take a look here, you can see our total damage reduction, 80%. And there you go, you, get, you can see all the stats. I'm not gonna go over them, take a good look. Okay, great. On this weapon, we are running the balanced weapon fitting. Why? Because we want it to use as less stamina as possible because the main purpose, let's set him over here, we're gonna get to him later. The main purpose of this build is to do the heavy spin and win swing until either you run out of stamina, which you won't do, or the swing itself stops. And it does eventually stop and run out. You can only do it so many times here. There you go. And as you see, you can do it until it stops and you don't run out of stamina. And then you can just start doing it again. So we'll just start swinging, swinging, and swinging. And that's why we have the balanced weapon fitting on there because it allows us with all the grit that we have and all the other stuff that we have, we can essentially do this so long that it's actually ridiculous. Look, we can just go again. We just immediately go again and go another full time without running out of stamina. That and the fact that we're doing over 144 damage with our heavy attacks. And as you can see, this also applies bleed. Now this thing applies bleed every time it hits. It doesn't matter whether it's a heavy attack, a light attack, it, it doesn't care. If it hits, it applies a bleed. So we'll come over here, we'll go up to, uh, let's go up to this guy because I don't want to get everybody over there super angry. All right, so we'll get this guy. I'll probably want, there you go. I was gonna say I'll probably one shot him, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll find another one here that we might be able to heavy attack. So basically what you do is you just start swinging before they get up and uh, you just swing right into them. There you can see we applied some bleed to him and you don't want them to interrupt your initial kickoff because once you initially start to spin, you have hyper armor and they can't stop you unless you hit a shield. Shields are the, are the bane of this build's existence. But as long as you don't hit a shield, you can see they can not interrupt your attack and you just spin directly into them like the whirling blade of death you are. So this build with all the damage reduction that we have um, and the fact that we're almost unstoppable allows us to go into pretty much any camp without a thrall and just wipe it out super quick. But if you have a thrall, that's where the real key for this build comes in because it allows you to essentially grind bosses down so crazy fast it's insane. Now, ideally you want the Sword of Krom like we have here with the damage kit on it so it hits like a freaking truck, but you don't have to have that. Essentially, you just need your thrall to have aggro so that you can grind down whatever is attacking him. So something as simple as a star metal greatsword will get the job done just fine. So before I show you that, I'm just going to teleport up here to um, New Asgarth because it's a great place to farm. And I just want to show you how you can just tear through this area crazy fast. Now, as far as healing items go, run whatever healing items you want. Whatever you feel is best, works best for you, run it. It doesn't matter what healing items you run, just whatever. You just need something to heal. So here we go with the ones right at the beginning. Look at this. Look, it's so insane. The dog's nothing. Look how little damage I took. This guy right here, we're just going to run up. We're going to use our light attack on him. Oh yeah, you got nothing, buddy. He can't even hit because we're just hitting him so hard. We're knocking him into the ground. So here we have two guys with shields, and I'm going to show you what happens when you run into shields here. These are going to be your only real problem because you can see there they block and they stop me from attacking. So we can start to spin and it's fine, but as soon as they start to block, then yeah, see, they just messed me up there. So now what we have to do is essentially kind of just run away. And when you run into this situation, you can't really use your like crazy grind attack. You gotta, you gotta heal up and just, uh, just go in there, fight them at normal, but it's perfectly easy to fight them normally 
because you hit so hard to begin with and you can see we already applied a bleed to that guy he died from the bleed and, and the other guy was already super low health so we were able to handle that so yeah shields are something you have to watch out for because they stop you but once you start spinning they're pretty much the only thing that can stop you ideally you want to start spinning before you get into a fight we got another shield person here i'm going to attempt to take her out first yeah she's just gonna keep blocking me there we go we got a couple of hits on her we're gonna roll away and you can see how much stamina we have it's insane it's absolutely insane so now is when we want to start spinning before they get a chance to attack try this again there we go now we got the spin going now we're good yeah you ain't you got nothing we got a named one here yeah you got nothing too oh oh he managed to he managed to hit me all right, so now we just walk away a little bit, heal up just a little bit. You don't even need to let the heal go all the way. Just walk away enough that you can start going at it again. And there we go. We're not going to give him a chance to block. We're going to turn around. I mean, look at this. This is insane. It's insane. And I'm. this is default settings on single player. I'm not cheating. Nothing like that. And... It's just crazy, crazy strong. We've just wiped out this entire village, and they haven't even been able to do anything. Look at this. Bam. You're done, son. Get out of here with that shenanigans. All right, so now we're just going to heal up, and uh, we're going to head back, and we're going to grab our thrall, and I'm going to show you taking down a boss. So for this build, any old thrall will do. Honestly, you just need something with a lot of HP. Uh, that's all that really matters in the long run. Uh, this guy's got 9,583. That's good enough. Uh, you just need something to soak up damage and be a meat shield and gain aggro while you grind whatever it is you're attacking to a pulp. And that is part of the reason that we are running just any bow. Any bow, it doesn't matter. Just run a bow and flint arrows and then some healing arrows because you can also drop some healing arrows down while you're spinning to keep yourself and your thrall healed up and i'll show you that here it works okay it's not the best but it's just a little added bonus if you can uh, manage to pull it off so we're just gonna shoot this guy we're gonna kite him out here okay here we go i finally managed to kite him out so we're just gonna kite him out a little bit further Oh, well, maybe not, because Thrall just wanted to jump in on it there. So what you can do is you can uh, have your healing arrows in your hotbar like that. And we know we're going to be fighting around here. So I can just drop a couple like this, and then we can run in here. And I know it's kind of hard to see. So watch how quick we grind this guy down. So he's attacking the Thrall right now, not paying the slightest bit of attention to us. And we're just going to spin and win. And the other cool thing is, is you can just roll back, wait like a hot second and immediately have enough stamina regen to just constantly do this over and over and over and never stay out of the battle long enough for the bleeds to wear down. And you can see he is hitting us a little bit and we're in the corruption a little bit. I'm actually going to step over here i kind of wanted him out of the corruption but you know what are you gonna do you also can hit your thrall so be careful on that another reason you want a thrall with super high uh health just in case you whack them a couple of times we can swap back fire a couple more healing arrows swap back to this go up here one shot him to make sure that we keep the bleeds on him and just spin and win and he's just about done one or two more spins should should finish him off oh nope just this one round there you go and uh to stop quickly just just hit x to unequip so one thing that i've noticed with these big axes like because this is essentially a two-handed axe uh if you didn't know is to stop the animations quickly just to unequip it it's a good habit to get into so you can see there that was pretty quick that was crazy quick it's even quicker if your thrall is wielding the sword of Krom, because he already makes short work of the bad demon uh, with the sword of Krom, but with you doing that in the background just bursts him down so quick i don't even know what was that like 30 seconds that couldn't have been more than a minute that was crazy quick and i know what you're thinking you're thinking but fire what about a big target like the red mother yeah she goes down pretty quick too so we'll go over here and uh we'll just give her a little love tap in the shoulder there okay so the key to this is shoot her in the shoulder to slow her down to let your thrall get in there and attack now what you want to do and you can avoid a good chunk of her damage by staying next to this back leg here it's not super easy to do but it is doable you do not want to get in front of her 
and you do not want to get hit by that and you can see here she turned around she's aggroed on us and i'm stuck so we're gonna try to get out of being stuck okay there we go so we're out of being stuck we're gonna heal up and uh see if we can get her and the thrall fighting again i love that she can just freaking pin me this is honestly one of those fights where you're just better off cheesing but it is doable so i'm gonna hold on a second till i'm sure that her look she's got the thrall pushed into the ground like come on Funcom, i know you want to add a bunch of cool stuff to the game and that's great but god they need to fix this kind of stuff and i don't even know if it's i mean i don't know they, they just need to really spend the time to fix it. Look, he can't even attack right now. And he can't get hit. Well, that's good. Let's see if I can maybe start wailing on her to show you uh, how quickly we can bust her down. So you can see there, if you stay at that at the hip right here, she can't hit you with that tail swipe as easy. And then you just kind of heal through it. Keep healing. And keep going. And that's it. You're going to wear down your mouse buttons pretty quick with this build too. I'm just going to give you a heads up. Like you just, I'm just over here just smashing this thing. But you can see how quickly we're grinding her down. Like she has a crazy amount of HP. Let me actually just, um, let me get out of her here. And there you go. You can see how much, with just that, that few seconds there, just those couple rounds, that's how much damage we've done. And Thrall's even unable to attack right now. That damage is all us. Okay, I'm not going to finish her because it's a very buggy fight. If you're going to fight her, cheese it. There's plenty of guides out there on how to do so. You're like, well, that's great. But what about other bosses? What about the uh, the little world bosses here like these guys? What about them? What if I want to grind some keys so I can try to get other legendaries for my thralls and stuff? Yeah, that's fine. Watch this. So we'll just uh, take that hit, apparently. Make sure Thrall gets in on it. Let's get them fighting. Come on, Thrall just beat the crap out of you. Attack him. Come on. Come on, get the thrall, get the thrall. There you go, there you go. That's what we wanted. Okay, watch this. Oh yeah, look at it. Look at this. It's ridiculous. It's so crazy ridiculous. Okay, we're gonna go for one full till it makes me stop. Okay, that was one until it made me stop. So now we're, we've regened, let's go again. I'm just gonna go through it. Look, he attacks us and he can't, couldn't even do anything there. And we're just gonna keep going. Oh, we got on his head there. Let's go again. He interrupted us. No, stop that. Stop that. I'm trying to show... I'm trying to show the people something here. And you keep interrupting my attack somehow. Even though I have hyper armor. Alright, there you go. Great. Are you happy? Can I spin now? Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna just heal through that. You're gonna chug healing. Whatever you're using to heal. Make sure it's light. Because you're gonna chug through it like crazy. Thrall's in the way. He's gonna cannon fodder. I don't know. It just happens. You know? Sometimes your Thrall gets in the way and you just gotta keep swinging. Casualties of war. And there you go. Look how quick. That was insanely quick. It's so stupid. Okay, let's do one more. So we got the Rhino boss up here. Oh, look at this guy. Watch this. Bam. Two shot. <laughs> let's do the Rhino boss. Hey, Rhino boss. Look at you. Are you ready to start doing... Hey, come back here. I'm trying to swing. Trying to hit you. And he's got so little HP. Look at this. It's so... We're going to bust him down. So he doesn't even know what's going on right now. He's attacking the tree because it's confused. Okay, so we wait one second. Okay, let's go again. I'm not even going to let my stamina regen because that should be enough to complete another full go. And the spin to win. There we go. We've almost got him. And you're going to do it. Oh, I thought we were going to do it. Okay, we'll just do a couple of slashes like that. There you go. That was the rhino boss. <laughs> like I'm telling you, this, this build is insane. It's only really insane for PvE crap, by the way. Don't take this in the PvP thinking like you're going to own everybody. I mean, you might kill one or two people, but it's really made to grind down pve stuff okay just a quick recap just in case i missed anything so here is our armor that we're wearing here is our attributes that we have specced into here is our weapon also this weapon comes from thag which is the smoke demon at the end of the wine cellar i have a guide on that the chance for it to drop is super slim it's on the screen right now because i forgot to look it up before i started recording 
uh, run whatever bow you want to run, use super cheap arrows used for kiting, use uh, healing arrows for you and your thrall. For the buffs, you can use the anglerfish and the catfish for strength and vitality, or you can just use all the elixirs here. You need to run these buffs, so vigor, enduring, might, and numbing. On all of our armor, we have the master armor plating, and on our weapon, we have the uh, balanced weapon fitting. If you're in a super cold area and you need more warmth, you can swap out your boots for the champion boots and the pants for the veneer tacit, and then you're running the war paint. Okay, I think that covers everything. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.